Hey, what's going on everyone? Sean from All Things EV here. In this video, I want to give you three takeaways from the Q3 2023 Tesla earnings call that just took place yesterday. There are three themes that I'm taking away from this particular earnings call. Number one, there's a lot of talk about the Cybertruck because they made some big announcements. Two, there was a lot of talk about artificial intelligence. And in fact, if you were playing a drinking game, you probably didn't make it all the way through the earnings call because they mentioned it a lot. And then third, cost reduction, manufacturing efficiencies. These are the three themes that I heard throughout the earnings call. And I wanna share with you some of those clips in this video and then also provide some commentary on what I think about it. And so we are like the car, photons in, controls out with neural nets, just neural nets in the middle. It's very interesting to think about that. Uh, we will continue to invest significantly in AI development um, as this is really the, the, the massive game changer and I mean, success in this regard in the long term, uh, I, I think has the potential to make Tesla the most valuable company in the world by, by far. If you have fully autonomous cars at scale and fully autonomous uh, humanoid robots that are truly useful, it's not clear what the limit is. And one of the overarching takeaways from this artificial intelligence theme is how Tesla will be able to utilize the information taken in from their millions and millions of cars and be able to use that and transfer that into a Tesla bot, an artificial intelligent Tesla bot that will then be able to do other functions and they'll be able to sell this product that they've leveraged all of the intellectual property that they've built in their vehicles, they'll be able to leverage it directly into and build on top of that for the Tesla bot. Uh, the Cybertruck, I know a lot of people are excited about the Cybertruck. Uh, I am too. I've driven the car. It's an amazing product. I, I do want to emphasize that there will be enormous challenges in, in reaching volume production with the Cybertruck um, and then in making the Cybertruck cash flow positive. This is this is simply normal for when, when you've got a, a Product with a lot of new technology, or any 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 new vehicle, brand new vehicle program, but especially one that is as different and advanced as the Cybertruck, uh, you will have problems proportionate to how many new things you're trying to solve at scale. So I just want to emphasize that while I think this is potentially our best product ever, uh, and I think it is our best product ever. Um, it is going to be require immense work to reach volume production and be cash flow positive at a price that people can afford. Uh, often people do not understand what is truly hard. That's why I say prototypes are easy, production is hard. Uh, people think it's the idea or you make a prototype, you, you design a car. And as soon as they're designing a car is, it is it's just anyone can do it. It, it does require taste. It does require effort to design a prototype. But the difficulty of going from a prototype to volume production uh, is like 10,000% harder to get to volume production than to make a prototype in the first place. And then it is even harder than that to reach positive cash flow. That is why there have not been uh, new car startups that have been successful uh, for 100 years, apart from Tesla. So, um, you know, I just want to temper expectations or Cybertruck. Um, it's a great product, but financially, it will take a year to 18 months before it is a significant positive of cash flow contributor. Uh, I, I wish there was some way to, that to be different, but that's uh, that's my best guess. It, it, yeah. So it, it, it really, the, the, the demand is, is, off, is off the charts. We have over a million people who have reserved the car. It's not, it's not a demand issue, but we have to make it. Um, and we need to make it at a price that people can afford. So we finally get some news on the Cybertruck. This is so great. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to when that delivery event is going to be, and we've heard it. We now know it's going to be November 30th of this year. They will do the delivery event. And on this earnings call, they really talked about tamping the expectation for 
uh, ramping production. Ramping production, they say, is going to be very, very difficult and low volume production at first. Starting production will be this year and then moving into 2024, but really full volume production in 2025. But the degree of difficulty for this new product is not to be underestimated. They're telling us in advance the production is going to be difficult. And to me, it's encouraging to hear Elon talk about this and be so forward about this. And hopefully he's learned from his mistakes with the Model 3. He's tamping the expectation because he recognizes that this is a completely different manufacturing process for this truck. And he doesn't want to set people's expectations too high. Vehicle deliveries in Q3 outpaced production, and we had yet another record quarter of profitability in our energy business. Congratulations to the Tesla team for their continued focus on operational excellence as we navigate through a period of economic uncertainty, high interest rates, and shifting consumer sentiment. As Elon mentioned, our Q3 operational and, uh, and financial performance was impacted by planned downturns for our factory upgrades. This was necessary to allow for further factory improvements and production rate increases. Despite such factory shutdowns, our cost per vehicle decreased to approximately 37,500. We saw sequential decreases in material cost and freight. Reducing the cost of our vehicles is our top right. On the operating expenses front, R&D expenses continue to rise to cyber, due to Cybertruck prototype builds and pilot production testing combined with spend on AI technologies like full self driving, Optimus, and Dojo. We have and will continue to make investments in these areas, and hence our capital expenditure and R&D will continue to grow in the near term. However, our focus is to continue making investments through positive cash flow from operations. This year itself, we have generated operating cash flows of approximately $8.9 billion and free cash flows of approximately 2.3 billion. Our other businesses are becoming more prominent on a standalone basis, with energy business leading the charge primarily from the growth in megabyte technology. Our services and other businesses on a year-on-year -year basis also continue to show positive momentum as we benefit from our growing fleet. As regards our pricing strategy, in addition to what we have shared before, I want to elaborate that most car buying happens with one or other form of financing, and hence, we also view pricing in terms of monthly costs for the customer. And therefore, as interest costs in the U.S. have risen substantially, it has required us to adjust the price of our vehicles to keep the monthly cost in parity. We try to offset such adjustments via focus on reducing costs. However, there is an inherent lag in cost reductions, which in turn impacts margin. To that extent, we recently announced a partner vehicle leasing program in the U.S., whereby you can get a standard range model Y or as low as $399 a month. In conclusion, as we navigate through a challenging economic environment, we'll focus on reducing costs, maximizing delivery volumes, and continuing making investments in the future, in particular, AI and other next generation products. We believe this strategy positions us well for the long term. Once again, I would like to thank the Tesla team for their efforts in the last quarter. After listening to their CFO talk, there's no doubt that they are hyper aware of the current economic state and the interest rates and how high they are. It appears like they're working incredibly hard to reduce the cost of production and manufacturing their products. And this is the way to be able to get people to purchase their products, but specifically their vehicles. They have other products, but they talked a lot about how the high interest rates are impacting people's ability to be able to afford their cars, and they're doing everything they possibly can on the cost side, the manufacturing side, to be able to reduce that and then in turn reduce the purchase price or asking price of those products. I think this is really great because even in a strong economy, it's going to benefit them to figure out ways to reduce cost. The first investor question comes from Craig. How many Cybertruck deliveries do you anticipate for 2024? I struggle to make an accurate guess at this point. Going back to what I said earlier, that the ramp is going to be extremely difficult. Like, like I said, it's, there's, there's, there's no way around that. If, if you try to make, if, if we just try to do some copycat uh, vehicle design, of which there are literally 200 models that are slight vari variations on a theme in the, in the Kibosh engine world, just, to, just to, distinctions without a difference, uh, then, you know, it's really not that hard. But if you want to do something radical and innovative and, and something really special, like the, like the Cybertruck, um, it is extremely difficult because there's nothing to copy. You have to invent not just a 
car, but the way to make the car. The, the more uncharted the territory, the less predictable the outcome. Now, I can say that if you say, well, where will things end up? I think we'll end up with roughly a quarter million Cybertrucks a year. And we're not, I don't think we're going to reach that output rate next year. We'll probably reach it sometime in 2025. You know, I think it's interesting when Elon Musk asks this question about what their production volume will be like for the Cybertruck, 250,000 a year, 250,000 units a year. I guess this makes sense if you're just specifically talking about the United States, but Ford and the F-Series is doing more than a million units a year, so it seems like they're really being cautious about this, even though they say, he said, Elon Musk said that they have over a million reservations for the Cybertruck. Could he be downplaying the level of interest here? Maybe they want to see how people react when these trucks get on the road before stating that they're going to be producing more than half a million units a year or even more than that. But I do think it's really interesting that he only said 250,000. To me, I think that there's a ton more interest in the Cybertruck than 250,000 units a year. Okay, that wraps up my summary. We've got a lot of juicy information on the Cybertruck that I think is going to get people, keep people going until the event on November 30th. I think it's great for them to talk a little bit more about their artificial intelligence and how they're thinking about taking in all of that data from their cars and then transferring that intellectual property into a Tesla bot or Tesla bots. They're going to build, this, this is essentially the Tesla bot will be building on top of everything that they know and have learned from autopilot and FSD. And to me, this is really, really exciting because it's not like they're going to be starting from scratch with the Tesla bot. It's all of the things that they've learned and all of the technologies that they've got being implemented directly into the Tesla bot. I think this is going to be incredibly exciting if they can execute on it. I know Elon Musk has overstated their timelines on FSD, uh, which he did mention on this call and admitted that he's been overly ambitious about it. So it's great to, to hear him admit that. And I think uh, if they can execute on FSD, uh, it's really going to accelerate their, their growth and give them a ton of leverage with their Tesla bot. And then lastly, it's the economic headwinds and how they're talking about reducing cost of things. To me, these are the three most important things that I heard on the earnings call, but what do you think? Was there something that I missed or something that really stood out to you? I'd love to hear in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this valuable, hit the like button and I'll catch you on the next video.